So I'm back at my bench. Uh, we're tying up some crappie jigs today, uh, this time with a dubbed body. Stay tuned. So, good morning everybody. Uh, I got uh, two different uh, types of dubbing uh, that I might use today. Uh, one that I'm definitely, uh, we're gonna demonstrate. Uh, I'm using an uh, ice dub, which is real nice. Let's see if I can get a close up of this. So we have some ice dub here. I'm gonna do a nice pink body. But uh, the colors they have with this are amazing. Uh, the chenille, the pearl, even the orange body all look fantastic. Uh, also is uh, Larva Lace, another really nice product. Uh, again, I, I really like the uh, chartreuse tinsel but also they have uh, a nice ice blue, a nice pearl color. They even have uh, some blacks and browns, dark copper, which look fantastic on a crappy body. So what we're doing today is I'm going to set this aside and I have some 132nd ball heads with a number eight must add hook that I have in the vise. And I'm going to begin by using 2 watt black nylon thread. This is just uh, regular Danville nylon. I'm going to lock the thread on in the center of the hook shank and walk the thread down to the point of the hook. And for the tail on this, what I like to do is I like to take a hackle feather. These are the ones that have the big webby fibers. I don't use them much unless I was doing, I don't know, a big ugly streamer, I guess. But I'm looking to get these fibers here. What I do is I line them up just so I have a pinch so the fibers are all the same length and strip them from the quill and then measure this out I want this the length of the, the length of the body past the bend of the hook hold that into place and I lock it on by putting the wraps towards the bend of the hook So at this stage, I can just now walk the threads back up to secure those butt ends up to the head and then back with touching wraps to where I was just to give a nice thread base. You can take your head cement or your Sally Hansen's, put a couple drops on those threads just to keep them secure. So what I have here, before I take my pinch, you can use whatever um, wax that you like. Uh, this is just a typical beeswax, shoemaker's wax, uh, works really, really well, uh, which is just a bee, beeswax and maybe a couple other things mixed in. Um, it's pretty tacky. Um, I like using some of the different types of uh, fly tying wax that you can use and uh, which one? This one is uh, super tacky so we'll go with that. So just a tacky fly tying wax. And just coat the threads. 
by running the thread through your wax. And now I can take my pinch of dubbing. Try to spread it out just a little bit. And then I can place it on the thread fibers and give it a twist to make that nice dubbing rope. If you need to, just wet your fingers as you give that a twist. Bring this back up. I'm going to take a couple wraps towards the bend of the hook and then angle my thread as I walk that dubbing noodle back up to the head. A couple wraps and it's secure. Now I can take another hackle feather, that same pink, Thing to do is just open up those fibers to expose the very tip which I can take off. And then just the length of these scissor points. I just cut the fibers like so. So as I lay that tip put my threads over the ends of those fibers that I just snipped and then I can take this and palmer it on and these are long webby fibers I do slide them back just a little bit there's two complete wraps my last wrap I bring underneath and on the outside of my bobbin so I can pick up my bobbin when I switch hands and just lock that into place. I like to use my X-Acto knife for this just to nip that off. Any fibers I can add another wrap. I'm angling my bobbin so that thread hugs the side of the, the head of the jig. So as it comes around, it locks those fibers back. So the, the thread is in front of the fibers. Now these hackle fibers, they stick out probably twice as wide as the hook gap, which is totally fine. This jig has a lot of action in the water you shake your jig or you shake your uh, rod tip just a little bit give that a little jiggle and uh, really triggers the fish to strike finish this off with your whip finish tool hand whip finish do it my old way with the loop and putting that through so these fibers They're pretty long. They extend just past the bend of the hook. Not quite as long as the tail. But to finish this off, again, just a couple drops of head cement. On that collar. Very pretty jig. I like doing this also in a chartreuse color with the chartreuse stub body, with the chartreuse feather, um, and pearl. Those three, those three, the pink, the pearl, and the chartreuse, all fish getters. Uh, so if you like what we did here today, go ahead, add some comments down, uh, down below. As always, subscribe uh, so you don't miss any new content. Keep tying, and until next time, guys, tight lines.